Everybody makes mistakes. It's part of life. But for the people on this list, their epically wrong turns will not soon be forgotten. It's the top eight worst decisions in history. Easily the lamest, most wet blanket constitutional decision of all time was ratifying prohibition in America. Truly the, excuse me teacher, you forgot to assign us homework of all the amendments. For 13 years, from 1920 to 1933, prohibition was the legal prevention of the manufacturing, sale, and transportation of alcoholic beverages in the U.S. Throughout this time, citizens would fight for their right to party via bootlegging, moonshine, bathtub gin, and speakeasies. Many cities developed huge issues with gangs and turf wars, with the infamous Al Capone emerging as the most legendary. At his peak, Al was reportedly earning $60 million a year off of his bootlegging and speakeasy enterprises. The decision to listen to the temperance folk was so unpopular, Franklin Roosevelt ran on a platform of repealing prohibition and ended up being re-elected three times. An appropriate nickname for the Hindenburg disaster would be Air Titanic. In 1937, the Hindenburg was the largest airship in the world. At the time, passenger planes weren't able to make the transatlantic flight unassisted, so the souped-up airship was the only way to fly across the pond. The Hindenburg embarked on its 37th transatlantic flight from Frankfurt, Germany to Lakehurst, New Jersey, with 90 people on board. Disaster struck during landing when the hydrogen-filled ship caught fire, plunging 200 feet to the ground, tragically killing 36 people. If you're assuming the terrible decision was letting a giant Nazi Zeppelin casually float its way over to America, you're half right. The decision to fill the ship with hydrogen, which is highly flammable, instead of helium, which is not, was due to export restrictions between the US and Germany. Someone probably should have flagged that policy. We've all heard the phrase, hope for the best, prepare for the worst, unless you helped build the Titanic, in which case you apparently learned it was hope for the best, prepare for, well, if we add any more lifeboats, we'll have to move the shuffleboard area. Uh, forget it, it'll be fine. Despite meeting the lifeboat requirements of the day, the Titanic's doomed maiden voyage in April 1912 will forever be a lesson in being prepared. The 20 lifeboats on board would have held a total of about 1,200 passengers. The Titanic's max capacity was 3,500 people. Ultimately, 1,500 people lost their lives when the ship struck an iceberg off the coast of Newfoundland and sank. The approval of this ridiculously inadequate lifeboat policy was a series of bad decisions by many people. However, the decision to cancel a lifeboat drill just hours before hitting the infamous iceberg? Bad decision, Captain. The accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine was the result of an improperly designed reactor that was operated by inadequately trained personnel. The accumulation of many, many, many small bad decisions ultimately led to a huge steam explosion in one of the reactors, which projected fission products and radioactive graphite into the atmosphere and around the campus. Two scientists were killed in the explosion, 28 died soon after from acute radiation syndrome, and 20 years later, 6,500 cases of thyroid cancer and 15 deaths were linked to the incident. Historians attribute the disaster to lack of safety standards and a culture of secrecy. The troubling outcomes of the Chernobyl incident are still being explored today. The ancient Greeks have taught us countless lessons through their history and mythology, and the Sicilian expedition by the Athenians during the Peloponnesian War is likely the source of the term, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Athens and its allies had been at war with the Spartans for over a decade. Athens' strategy was to avoid a land war with the legendary Spartan army and concentrate on its navy instead, since the Athenian fleet was far more formidable. However, the tides eventually turned on Athens. In 421 BCE, Sparta and Athens had agreed to put a halt to their battling for the first time in years, but the Athenians elected to invade the prosperous island of Sicily, believing its conquest would be the final nail in Sparta's coffin. However, this proved to be arrogant, misguided, and ultimately disastrous. The invasion was poorly planned, and there was infighting amongst generals. The Spartans sensed that the Athenian military was overextended and declared war on Athens, ending the peace between them, making it impossible to send reinforcements to Sicily. 
Eventually, the Athenians retreated from Sicily, having lost at least 7,000 men, and their once invincible navy was almost completely destroyed. Athens was totally destabilized by the Sicilian expedition, and this marked the beginning of the end for the empire. Talk about blowing a lead. The ancient Trojans fell for the oldest trick in the book, though to be fair, that book was about the Trojans. The ancient Greeks and Trojans had been fighting a war with each other for a solid decade, and it was becoming clear that the walls of Troy were impenetrable, but the Greeks had a trick up their tunics. The legendary Trojan horse was built of wood and presented at the gates of Troy with a dozen Greek soldiers led by Odysseus hiding inside. Horses were sacred to the Trojans, and it appeared that the Greek army had fully retreated and left the horse as a gift. A Trojan priest and priestess begged that the horse be thrown off a cliff, but everyone was too jazzed about having seemingly won the war and started partying instead. That night, while all of Troy drunkenly slept, Odysseus and his men slipped out of the horse and opened the gates for the rest of the Greek army, who had been hiding on a nearby island. Troy was sacked and the Greeks won the war. Trojans live on today as college mascots and prophylactics, and definitely wish their ancestors had decided to listen to their elders. There was nobody more power-hungry than Hitler in World War II, and his decision to invade the Soviet Union, creating a two-front war for Germany, was as gluttonous a move as one could make. Hitler's advisors begged him not to mess with the behemoth to the east, but when Russia invaded Romania, Hitler viewed it as a threat to his oil supply and a challenge to his hubris. He committed 3 million troops, over 3,000 tanks, 2,500 aircraft, and 7,000 artillery to his Russian invasion. But logistical preparations were inadequate. Eight months later, it was clear the operation was a failure and a critically bad decision for Hitler. Shah Allah ad din Muhammad of the Khwarezmian Empire decided to follow his gut, and it led to the dynasty being gutted. By 1218, Genghis Khan and his Mongol army had been tearing through Asia for over a decade and had already conquered three neighboring dynasties. When Genghis approached the Shah via a caravan of 500 men in a bid to become trading partners, Allah ad din was understandably suspicious. However, it wasn't the best decision to attack and loot said caravan, then refuse to repay Genghis or set the prisoners free. And when Genghis sent a second group of three ambassadors to try to sort out the caravan situation, it was definitely a bad decision to shave the three men and behead one of them. By this point, the Shah had poked the bear. An enraged Genghis Khan declared total war on the Khwarezmians, sending 100,000 soldiers, the largest army he had ever assembled, to completely destroy all of the empire's royal buildings, towns, farmland, and people. The entire empire was sacked in less than two years. It was this invasion that gave the Mongols their widespread reputation of being ruthless, fierce, and bloodthirsty. Well, there you have it, the worst decisions in history. The next time you find yourself at a crossroads, just ask yourself, what would the people from that History Channel video do? Then do the opposite.